Okay, this uh, tutorial is on uh, secondary color correction, a little bit more advanced here. Uh, what secondary color correction is, is uh, a lot of people think, oh, secondary color correction is correcting secondary colors. No, it's not. Um, what it actually is, is finding a specific uh, color vector within um, an image and just adjusting that. So it's actually kind of like secondary color grading as opposed to correction, really. Uh, one example is like right here in the sky. Say we want to bring out the blues in the sky right there as opposed to um, changing the blue in the entire image. Uh, for the, this example, like if you've got a, a fast color corrector here added to your shot uh, and you want more blue in the sky, the natural thing to, would be to do is to try to grab this little uh, hue and balance angle slider and add more blue to the shot. Um, which obviously, yes, it makes the sky bluer, but it also makes everything else blue in the image. So what we're going to show you how to do is actually select a color vector, like a range of blue, and increase that or decrease it and, uh, or get rid of it, or grade a specific color vector. Um, so what I'm going to do here, I've already got a fast color corrector on here. We've done some basic grading from a previous tutorial. Uh, I'm going to select um, I'm going to create, or sorry, add a new color corrector here, three-way color corrector. There's a couple in here, the RGB color corrector and three-way color corrector that will have a secondary color correction option. I'm going to drag a three-way color corrector. We're going to use a three-way color corrector in this instance. Okay, uh, what this really does is it gives you, uh, with a three-way color corrector, it gives you the options of... Um, changing the colors uh, there's a lot more powerful than the, the fast color corrector you can actually change the colors in the shadows the midtones and the highlights of um, of the image and there's also the RGB color corrector which you it will give you the option of correcting uh, specifically the red channel the blue channel or the green channel if you go to the RGB parade here uh, it'll, it shows it each individual channel within your video signal here uh, within your composite video signal and and you can go in with the RGB color corrector and alter just the red channel or the green channel or the blue channel specifically. Um, but what we're going to do in this one is secondaries. We're going to go back to our waveform here. Um, actually, we should be showing like vector scope or something like that since we're going to be messing with colors. Um, but what it, if you go over in your three-way color corrector here, what we're really going to concentrate instead of this area today, we're going to show you this option right here. You arrow this down. Um, expand this secondary color correction window and uh, you, this is where we're going to be operating out of it's mainly here uh, so what we're going to do is decide uh, what is going to be corrected in this image we're going to create what's called a mask and uh, and then whatever we do here will affect that mask so first of all we're going to go here to this little center item here and we're going to tell it what to correct by using this eyedropper we're going to click on the eyedropper come up here and cl click on this blue Notice this little center button is turned blue for that range, uh, for that color hue, basically. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to select just not that blue color, because you'll notice the blue kind of changes shades and colors across the sky, just kind of slightly. Uh, so we're going to select a range. And what we decide um, what range we're going to be choosing, you're going to have to select this show mask. What that will do is we'll show you, see right here is selected a range of blue, but not quite the sky over here or over here. So we're not affecting the whole sky. So that's what your hue, saturation, and luma uh, sliders are for down here. You arrow this down, and you'll notice this weird little slider. What this does, here's all your uh, color ranges right here. Notice it has selected something. Uh, let me explain this a little bit. You've got a block, a block, a triangle, and a triangle. Uh, in between these two blocks here is the blue color that you've selected, that you've arrowed and selected up here. And uh, what we've got here is, uh, this is the fall off at the end here. So it's got kind of a blue range, and then it kind of falls off into a other shade of blue and falls off to another shade of blue. And by the time this triangle is done here, uh, the blue is finished. So this is the range it's selected, then it kind of gradually falls off that blue. And on this end, falls off the blue on this end. So you can actually tell it to choose more ranges of blue. You don't want to do too much or it will start eating into the building and get the blue reflection of the building. But watch this as we increase here. Uh, not noticing a whole lot where this is really going to start selecting the mask is in luminance. Um, so I'm going to undo that here. Um, but you can choose, you can start selecting mask based on hue, basic, the basic color, the saturation, the amount of that color, and luminance, how bright or dark that color is. And where, let's try saturation, see if that'll choose any more 
go on both ranges there. See, now it's starting to eat into the building here. So I can tell you where this is really going to start choosing. The sky is going to be luminance. Uh, let's go here, brightness levels. And we're going to tell it to choose more luminance on this end. And there we go. You see that selected more sky over to this region. And more luminance on the lighter end. So we did more luminance on the darker end and more luminance on the brighter end. Now I've got a wider range of luminance and then it just kind of gradually falls off and gradually falls off there. And look what we've done. We've selected, uh, for the most part, more sky. Let's get a little bit more dark end of the sky here. Now it's starting to select into the building and we don't want to do that. So I'm going to undo and make a kind of a longer fall off on either end to kind of soften it out a little bit. And now it's starting to eat into the buildings, so that looks like it's enough. Now I'm going to go up and try to mess with the hue a little bit, now that we've got a wider range of luminance, and see if we can select more of that sky. And that's eating into the building, so this is really just a bunch of uh, trial and error. You just sit there and select these things. There we go. Now, this, now that I've increased the luminance, the saturation really grabbed a hold of the rest of the sky there. So it's just a lot of uh, trial and error experimenting. See, the, taking the saturation over to the other way chooses more of the building. So now I've got a good portion of the sky. The white is what, by the way, the white is what is selected, and the black is what it's not going to affect at all. So we've got a little bit of the building there. That's not too bad. Probably won't even notice it. We've got a good portion of the sky here selected. So, uh, and that is what it is going to be grading. What is white will grade. What is black it will not touch. So now we can really start affecting the sky. But a couple other things here before we start affecting the sky. You've got soften and edge thinning, which is very typical for any sort of mass creation uh, that you do in After Effects and Premiere in any sort of mass creation. Soften and edge thinning is really helpful to make the, the edge of the mat not look so hard edged. Uh, so I'm just going to soften this just a teeny bit. I'm going to grab this and drag over to the left. Let me drag it way to the right and show you what it does. See how it softens the edges and uh, really makes it uh, not so hard edged. By the way, I'm going to go like about three pixels here and uh, just soften up the edges a little bit. Maybe four pixels. And I can barely see it kind of starting to change the soft edge there. Uh, now what the edge thinning do is if you grab uh, this and drag it to the left, and let go, it's going to eat the mask, it's going to eat into the white part of the mask, and, and it'll edge thin, it'll start thinning the edge of your mat into the white. If you do it the opposite direction, if you go, let's see, let me do a plus 100 here instead of negative, that is going to eat the mask into the black. Now you notice it's starting to pick up parts of the building. Um, so I'm going to put that back to zero there. So and usually you're just going to eat it into the mask just a little bit, and now the blue is going to kind of just start bleeding into the building edge a little bit. It makes it also so it's not so hard edged. Um, you also have the invert option here, which we're not going to be doing. Uh, we're not going to be inverting our mask. But um, but you can do that if you if you want to make everything black and white. Uh, so this is a kind of cool thing. I'll show you this here in a second. Um, except for one item in the image. Let's do this. We're gonna, um, now that we've done that, we've selected our mask. I'm going to uncheck Show Mask. And now the range that we're going to be uh, correcting on here, or grading, is going to be just within that mask. So now watch, as I grab the midtones and I drag them toward blue, look at the sky, and that just became very, very, very blue. If you want to increase uh, saturation, go to master saturation, crank that up, and you'll see it boost up even more. Uh, Midtone saturation, I mean, you can boost all this stuff up and it's going to get bluer and bluer, and that's that's like way too blue. But but now you're seeing it's changing the blues in the sky and not changing uh, the buildings around it. Let me uncheck this, watch this. See, there's before. Now it even looks like it's almost a gray sky. And now you check the three color corrector and very, very blue. Um, so that is one way of doing it. Let's just do a quick little playing here. We're going to uh, playing with this a little bit. We're going to go in and say invert uh, mask. I'm going to invert the mask. So now, notice the blue has been added to the buildings here as opposed to and has left the sky alone. But now watch this. If you want the sky to be blue and everything else to be black and white, something like they do in like Sin City with the red lips, something like that, um, now we can uh, go up and decrease our master saturation to zero. Actually, let's change everything to zero here on saturation. And everything is going to be black and white except for the sky. So now if you want the sky to really uh, show blue and everything else to be black and white, what I can do is duplicate 
my uh, through a color corrector here. Copy and paste. Um, Command C, Command v, v as in Victor. Paste it, and now I'm going to open up my um, my copy here, and I'm going to tell it not to invert the mask. So uh, none. And now I can go up, turn my saturation back up to 100. Actually, we can just reset each one of these here to back to 100. And notice we got the blue sky again. Buildings are in black and white. The sky is in blue, which is pretty cool. So if you're trying to go for a specific effect where everything's in black and white and the sky is in blue, awesome. There we go. And uh, that concludes the tutorial on this. If you have any questions or suggestions for tutorials, uh, just send me a message and uh, I'll be able to add new video tutorials in the future.